During the master classes at the Sundance Institute, Tarantino had met Tony Scott. Tony had been wanting to make a crime action film and offered to buy the rights to Reservoir Dogs. But Tarantino refused and asked him to read True Romance instead. He read it in one evening and by the next day had used all his connections to buy the rights and find a $30 million budget. He also got Roger Avery to join the project, since the first version of the screenplay was his. Roger tweaked the screenplay a little bit to find the director's needs, and also rewrote the finale. Tony knew that this upset Quentin, whereas Scott's happy end was a compromise with Hollywood's expectations of a commercial film. But in fact, the director made two versions of the finale and chose the one which he believed worked the best. Tarantino never publicly shared his disappointment and called his work on True Romance exceptional. Hello? Hello, Hello baby. baby. Clarence? You got it. Yeah, Clarence, it's great to hear from you, man. What's going on? I think by far he's the better guy to have done this movie. And also, it was exciting. The idea of seeing my world through Tony's eyes and have it look like that. True Romance was produced by a company created by Quentin and Lawrence Bender, A Band Apart, named after the Jean-Luc Godard film, Band Apart. Later, the company worked on all of Tarantino's films and partnered with Robert Rodriguez, John Woo, Tim Burton, Darren Aronofsky, and Luc Besson. After the premiere of True Romance, Quentin helped to promote the picture by going on the promo tour. And though he wasn't being paid for that, he went to great lengths to ensure the film's success at the box office. However, with Natural Born Killers, it was a different story. My name will get brought up from time to time, but I think I've done a pretty good job of distancing myself from the film. Basically, if you like it, it's all Oliver. Good, bad, or indifferent. It has very little to do with me. It's literally a candy lane of murder and mayhem. To this day, Tarantino has not seen the film and doesn't want to discuss it. From the moment that the screenplay made it into Oliver Stone's hands, a quiet war began between the two directors. As you may remember, Tarantino had given the rights for Natural Born Killers to his friend, Ran Vossler, who had spent the last four years trying to make the movie and dreamed of directing it himself. Quinton had named only one condition. Ran was to shoot a small excerpt so that Quinton could make sure that their vision was the same. At that stage, Vossler had begun to collaborate with Don Murphy, who promised him $3 million for the budget. According to Tarantino, Vossler signed a contract with him and three days later was removed as director and made co-producer instead. Having gotten his hands on the screenplay, Murphy passed it to Oliver Stone who pretty much rewrote the whole thing with his colleagues. Tarantino was furious and said several times that everyone who was part of creating that film just wanted to use his newfound glory. Murphy counted by saying that he would never bet on a director whose Reservoir Dogs made less at the box office than Leprechaun. You can't fix Ozzy's brain. I know that. In another interview, Murphy explained that they had to rewrite the screenplay because like all of Tarantino's screenplays, it seemed to be made up only of expletives. Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? Or are you gonna bite? Similar quips and snide comments continued for more than a year until both sides came to an agreement whereby Tarantino would stop airing his discontent in exchange for a tidy sum. He also insisted that his name not appear in the credits. Though it ended up there anyway, a humble line read story by Quentin Tarantino. Thanks to the agreement, Quentin made more than a half a million dollars in royalties on this project. Oliver Stone thought it was incredibly hypocritical to sever all ties with the film, but then agreed to receive royalties and a percentage of the profit. He was also highly displeased when he found out that Quentin had told the actors from Reservoir Dogs that if they ever worked with Stone, they would never work with him again. The story reached its climax with the release of a non-fiction book entitled Killer Instinct, which told the story of the creation of natural born killers. Within the pages, it's easy to find dozens of jabs and insults pointed at Quentin, with most quotes belonging to Don Murphy. 
If Quinton didn't agree with what was published in my book, he should have taken his grievances to a court of law. That's the civilized recourse society has provided for disagreements. But Quinton didn't take them to court. On the 22nd of November 1997, in a Los Angeles restaurant, he beat Murphy up. He was stopped by the police on his way out. But Don didn't press charges. The conflict was mediated by Miramax co-founder Harvey Weinstein, who convinced the enemies to shake on it. But a few days later, Tarantino went on the Keenan Ivory Wayan show and gladly described, in detail, how he'd bitch slap Murphy. He sued Tarantino and demanded $5 million in moral damages. The case was rejected, and both sides agreed to stop talking dirt about each other. You buddy boy. You. I f too. F you talking to? All right? Off. Hey, do you like our work? Let us know with your like and comment. Push that subscribe button and share with your friends. If you want to support the project financially, become our sponsor on Patreon or YouTube sponsorship. Thank you.